Assalamu alaikum. So we've discussed secularism and a skeptic's approach to the different conflicting man-made ideologies of today. In this lecture, we'll discuss liberalism. What is liberalism? Now this can be kind of confusing. What we mean by liberalism here is liberalism with a lowercase l, not referring to conservatives and liberals, which are two labels used to demarcate people's political views and usually associated with the Republican and Democratic political parties here in the US. Liberalism, in the philosophical sense, is the idea that universal moral goodness is in pursuing liberty and that evil is a deprivation of liberty. Liberty being freedom from oppressive authority, to be able to do and think as one pleases. In modern liberal nations, among other freedoms, you have the freedom to hold any religious belief that you would like. That's referred to as freedom of religion or freedom of conscience. And the freedom to say what you want, freedom of speech. Of course, the limit is based on the harm principle, as long as you aren't harming others. Your rights end where others' rights begin. The rule of law, or the idea that the law should apply fairly to everyone, regardless of race, gender, economic class, etc., and that nobody is above the law, is also crucial to liberal nations. Essentially, liberalism has four key car characteristics. One, liberalism is individualistic. It's all about what's best for the individual. Two, liberalism is egalitarian. All people are the same morally. Liberalism is universalist. We have the very best political system. And four, liberalism is melioristic. The world would be a much better place if everyone adopted our system. As a comparison, Islam makes all these claims except that it's not individualistic. All right, some history. Liberalism was introduced by the well-known English philosopher John Locke, who is very famous in the US for having strongly influenced the Founding Fathers, especially and primarily Thomas Jefferson, who is the chief architect of the Declaration of Independence and one of the earliest of the US presidents. Going back, John Locke of the 17th century wrote his famous book, Two Treaties of Government, which put forth the idea that a government is only legitimate if it gets consent from those governed. The purpose of government was to protect the individual, to protect the citizens' life, liberty, and property. As a side note here, the Founding Fathers would later borrow this statement and change it to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The fact that property was made almost synonymous with happiness surely tells us something. Remember our discussion of material experiences and the expectation of fulfillment. But anyways, we can continue that discussion about our consumer culture at a later time. So, what led John Locke to have these views on government? Let's look at the context. There was a decline of the feudal system in Europe. Previously, kings ruled without question. The Catholic Church was weakening and Protestant Christianity was on the rise. After 350 years of religious warfare, Europeans wanted a different system to rule, one that was not based in religion, which is understandable. Scientists like Copernicus, Galileo, and Darwin had questioned established beliefs set by the church. The scientific revolution, which ensued, caused not only the weakening position of the church in people's eyes, but also the idea that maybe experimentation works with law, ethics, and morality, since it clearly works with science. We shouldn't just continue to blindly believe that was the notion, that was the idea. What we thought was true might not be true. So instead, let's try things. Let's propose different ideas and let's vote. An interesting fact, among these experiments that were tried with this phil philosophy in mind were the American and French revolutions. A final point with regards to the history and development of this ideology as it relates to us today is that we can't just assume that liberalism is the only way. We have to understand its context. European history is very different than Middle Eastern history, for example. The most Muslim world didn't have feudal lords, the Catholic Church, or a clash between reason and revelation, or science and scripture. We can't just copy and paste liberalism as the solution in all cases. Consider this. Is asserting that liberalism is the solution very different than what early Europeans had done? I don't think so.